So today let's take a look at and into another interesting device, this pocket scale from eBay, which was about, as far as I remember, about five dollars, not very expensive, and it comes in several versions, as you can see on the box, and another version here, and my one is 500 grams maximum and 0 0.01 grams resolution. And it doesn't say much on the box, auto calibration, tear full capacity, auto of 30 seconds, and operating temperature, and here's some manual for it. And from the other side, if you want to read it, and here's the scale, with five buttons on it to control it, and it opens like this, so it's protected, and here it has two AAA batteries in it, and some screws, and let's try to test it, of course I have to put it on a solid surface, and it shows a zero grams, and when I put something on it, it goes up until 500 grams. It goes up to about 500 grams, and then it says overloaded, or something like this. So let's try to put some batteries on it, and you have the tear function, and it basically compensates for the weight of some container or something. You can turn the light off or on, and it's the annoying blue LED. I would probably use a white or yellow or green LED, which is much better to look at. And the light looks more cyan in camera, but in reality it's quite deep blue, which is not very pleasant for human eyes. And you can also switch units, grams, not sure what it is, ounces, carats probably, and grains, but of course almost everybody uses grams. Five different units, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and back to grams. And it also seems to have a function to measure the number of pieces of something based on the weight of it. A long press probably, and then you can calibrate it to some number of pieces. Well, but the lowest number is 25. Let's say each battery is five pieces of something. And now it's basically calibrated to the weight of each piece, and now four batteries, 40 pieces, three batteries, 30 pieces, 20 pieces, 10 pieces. It basically measures the number of pieces of something based on the weight. Of course, given that all pieces are the same weight, of course. And so it's a nice, useful scale, but now, of course, let's take a look in it to see what's inside and how does it work. The only screws are under this cover, the two screws here and the batteries are here, of course they were not included. Are there any screws under this? No, so let's put it back if I can, and let's try to unscrew those. And does it fall apart? It seems like those screws are for the weight sensor, not for the cover, but well, now it falls apart. And this part comes out and it reveals another screws here. So let's remove them. And now it should open like this and this is basically just the bottom of it with the space for the batteries and no other components in it and here is the board with the buttons and the display and a lot of wires here. Do you go to the battery space and Four wires go to this weight sensor. It seems to be a strain gauge load cell, probably a bending beam configuration. And basically this beam is connected to this plate on this side of it, and it's screwed to the bottom on this side of it. And it has four wires going to it, which is probably a wheat stone bridge. It probably has four sensors, in it, in a bridge configuration. As you apply weight to it, some of the sensors are compressed and some of them are stretched. And this actually increases or reduces the resistance of them, but of course the changes are very small, so it's not easy to measure them directly. 
So they are in a bridge and you're basically measuring the imbalance of the bridge. So let's draw a picture of it. This beam is basically this beam inside of it from this side and on one side of it the top plate of the scale is mounted on it and the bottom of the scale is mounted on it from the other side. And when you put some weight on the scale it applies a force on it and it bends the beam. And of course the bending is grossly exaggerated on this picture, so it's easy to see. So let's imagine those blue things are the sensors and as you bend the beam it also bends the sensors. It basically changes their shape. Those two are stretched and those two are compressed. And the sensor probably contains a grid of a fine wire on it or some conductive trace on a substrate and it can be either stretched like this or compressed like this. And of course if you stretch it you increase the resistance of the trace or a wire and if you compress it you reduce the resistance. Because if you stretch it it's getting longer and if you compress it it's getting shorter. But of course the changes of size are extremely exaggerated in this picture. In reality they are quite tiny and also the changes in resistance are quite tiny. And the changes in resistance are so tiny that they are hard to measure so it actually measures the imbalance in the bridge instead. Because this is much easier to measure. It probably uses a Wheatstone bridge which looks like this. It has four sensors, four resistive sensors in it and if there is no weight on it and the sensors are in balance there is no voltage at the output of the bridge. And if you load it some sensors are getting compressed. This one is compressed, compressed and this one is stretched and this one is stretched. And the stretched ones are getting longer and thinner so they have a higher resistance and the compressed ones are getting shorter and thicker so the resistance is lower. And of course the bridge is powered using some regulated voltage. And now imagine this sensor is getting compressed and this one is getting compressed and this one is getting stretched and this one is getting stretched. So the resistance goes down here and here a little bit and it goes up a little bit here and here. And it's basically like two resistive dividers and because you get a slightly lower resistance in the upper side which is positive so you get a slight positive voltage here and here you get a slightly lower resistance in the negative side of it so you get a slightly negative voltage here. Or basically the voltage goes slightly up here and slightly down here. So now the bridge is out of balance and this end of it is slightly positive in reference to this end of it. And then it's measured by the electronics and the weight is calculated from it. And of course the weight of this plate is subtracted digitally probably and also you can press the tear button and you can digitally subtract the weight of some other container of some object or substance you're waiting. So the weight of the container is not included in the measurement and the sensors have four wires going from them. Which also suggests that it's a wheat stone bridge. It has a positive input, a negative input and those two outputs for the measurement. And they probably go into some analog to digital converter in the circuitry. And here's once more the sensor which is basically a metal beam which is cut out here. And the more they cut out the more sensitive it probably is. This is probably some way of calibration, even though of course the fine calibration is probably done in a software, in some chip. And it seems like it has some sensors on it, probably one here, one here, one here and one here. The wires split here, so basically three wires go on this side and another three go on this side. Each side of it has one half of the bridge basically. There is some kind of rubbery protective resin on it. When I remove it, can I see something interesting or not? Well, it reveals the pair of the sensors. One here and one here. And there is basically a fine grid of a wire 
with one terminal on top and one terminal at the bottom of the picture. And the other sensor is the same. And the same thing is from the other side of it here. So it's in total four sensors. Can I get a better picture of it with my camera? Maybe now. Nice. And now let's take a look under this board. Even though of course the most interesting part of it is probably the sensor. And this is probably going to be just a board with some buttons, rubber buttons with some conductive rubber pads and the display and an elastomeric connector to the display and of course a chip under a blob. Am I right? Yes. The buttons have some conductive rubber pads on them. Here is the display or this is the backlight of the display actually. Here is the display. Here is the elastomeric connector or uh, conductive rubber. And that's it. The display doesn't have the shiny backplate because it has the backlight. Here is the elastomeric connector also called the conductive rubber on the display. There are basically alternating conductive and non-conductive traces on the rubber, but their pitch is several times smaller than the pitch of the contacts on the display. And like this, it doesn't have to be aligned. They can put the rubber on the display in a random position. And here's the board. And there's really not much of it on it. Those button pads, the chip under the blob and some capacitors, tiny SMD ones and a resistor and some connections and that's it. And those connections to the display. And I wonder what are the voltages on the sensor? It's marked V minus, V plus, S minus, S plus. Let's try to measure the voltages on those terminals. So let's do the measurements. First, let's measure the input voltage of the Wheatstone bridge. And it's 2.48 volts, which is most of the voltage of the battery. There are two cells, so it's about 3 volts from the batteries. Now let's try to measure the voltage from one output to the negative. It should be about half of this. Yes, it is. 1.24 volts. And the differential voltage is not even measurable. Let's set it to 2 volts range or 200 millivolts. Nothing. It's a zero and when I press the sensor, it shows something like 10 millivolts. The voltages are quite small. When I put a battery on it, 0 0.2 millivolts. Five batteries, barely one millivolt and one kilogram of solder, 6.5 millivolts. And this is actually double its range, so it's about 3 millivolts full scale. So the analog to digital converter has to be able to measure quite low voltages. And the resistance of the bridge is at the input about 1 kilo ohm and at the output also about 1 kilo ohm. I basically measured two resistors in series and two in parallel, so each of them also should be 1 kilo ohm. And now putting it back together time. And as always, when putting a screw back into plastic, I turn it counterclockwise until it clicks and then I screw it back. This actually finds the original thread instead of cutting a new one because this would destroy the thread and the screw would just come out. So it's back together and it seems to work. So this is Dark Wild and see you in my next videos and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. And of course my patrons get early videos, at least one day earlier and I also still plan to take a look inside of some other devices like those ones.